yeah. even into college. And so for not only myself, but for my brother Eric and Emory, uh, where those things continued on. I got to ask this for all of the young athletes out there. I'm going to ask it in different phases, but in those years when you were getting ready to play, what was your mental, emotional regimen when you were getting ready for a game? What went through Emmett's head when you were getting ready for game time? Your game face, oh, your game mindset. Right. What did you say to yourself? Well, a number of things. Number one, um, I tried to visualize the entire game. Really? Before the game even was played. The entire game? I tried to visualize the play calls, when I got the ball, what was going on on the defensive side of the ball, where the guys was coming from. I tried to create this picture, this movie in my mind in terms of what I was going to do and what I was going to see um, and and how I was going to respond. If, and so I try to play the we, we We say as athletes, we say play the game in your mind first. And that's what I tried to do, try to play the game in my mind. And then I tried to, uh, before the game, I just tried to relax into the moment and try not to allow the moment to get too big uh, because big games will bring a ton of anxiety, a ton of excitement, a ton of energy. And sometimes you burn so much energy before the game, you can't even play the game to your best ability because you're emotionally spent. But you have to learn those things by going through big games. Uh, that's why life experiences is such a powerful thing. If you never had the experience of playing in any big game, and then when you play in one, you would never know what it was like. You, you're, you're, you might underplay it and not be at your best, or you might overplay it and not still be at your best. Mm -hmm. And so but having the experience of being in games that are very, very meaningful to you as an individual player and to you as a team, is absolutely paramount to your life experiences. I think it all pays, it pays itself forward and backwards. It gives yeah. you the opportunity to appreciate certain things. I remember the coaches used to tell us in high school, you know, men, football teaches you about life. Yes. And I'd roll my eyes like, you know, football teaches you about football. Give it a <laughs> rest, guys. <laughs> I have to tell you, when I got through playing football and got into life, and something was tough, I really thought back to those times where you're in the fourth quarter and you're down eight points, not seven. Right. They've got the ball on your 10, and somehow or another you wound up winning the game. They fumble, you go, you get the ball, you go for two, you get it, you tie it up, and you just think, don't ever quit. It ain't over. It ain't, it over. ain't over. I mean, I did look back and say it really did teach you about life. I don't know how anybody that's not in athletics – learns grit and don't quit. Yeah. I just don't know how they do it. You, you, it's almost impossible in some cases unless you mentally, you, you have to go through something. Something. Something has to prepare you for that kind of grit. And not only does it have to prepare you for that kind of grit, but like I just talked about, I just talked about it, anxiety and stressors. Yeah. Uh, all of those things. How do you rise up and make the play when your number is called? How do you put all of those stressors down below and stay in the moment and not allow the moment to get too big. Yeah. You have to go through those type of things in order to handle that kind of balance and be able to deal with it. And yeah. so, and I think football uh, has put us in a lot of different precarious situations that force us to do things uh, that would, that we would not necessarily do in a normal situation. Yeah. And it teaches you about leadership as well. 